Well, it is the calm before the storm here in South Ozone, Queens, as they are calling for bad weather, but that didn't stop some good weather here at Aqueduct for this Friday card. Maggie Wolfendale, the MIG, sits beside me. MIG, what do you think? What's the weather looking like? Well, it, it looks a, a bit precarious for tomorrow. I know they already closed training here uh, for the morning, but there won't be a decision made until tomorrow morning to make sure that the impending weather actually does hit our area. There is a slight chance that it could miss us. So if you're planning on coming out, don't change those plans just yet because we will, we will wait till the morning. Right, and don't forget that the post time will be 1245 for tomorrow and Sunday's cards. Well, a race that was part of the National Handicapping Tournament in Las Vegas was actually our seventh race today. And uh, some people, the leaderboard changing up and down. I mean, last time I looked, it was Ty Anderson in the lead. Now he's all the way back down to 10th. So uh, it's really exciting exciting to watch these guys play. Yeah, it looks like it could change a great deal in a short period of time, and they have tomorrow uh, as well, right, Maggie? Mm -hmm. And then there's a final table on Sunday? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that final table, they will uh, have, I think it's seven mandatory races that they have to play from, those ten finalists. So um, it really comes down to the nitty-gritty and a lot of money on the line. Well, kind of taking that concept from poker, having the final table yeah. and kind of that build-up. It's a pretty neat concept and maybe get that level of excitement that poker's been able to capture uh, when you watch it on TV and you have the whole cards. Although, do they know their selections out in front? Yeah, that's a good yeah, question. I, I'm curious I mean, about I'm that. sure a lot of them look at the board, look at where the odds are, and, and make that bet at, you know, two minutes to post or, or what have you. So it's really interesting. It'll be fun to watch moving forward. And Aqueduct is one of the mandatory tracks that is required to be played. Well, a horse that's on the work tab and has been and maybe prepping for a race down at Gulfstream is Tonalist, our Jockey Club Gold Cup and Belmont winner of from this past. Last year in 2014 for Christoph Clement, he went 5 eights today down in Payson. Yeah, nice to see him back on the comeback trail. I like that we have so many of these good three-year-olds back as four-year-olds, Maggie. It makes for good racing because you have rivalries and you want to see everything settled on the racetrack. Tonalist, a very good horse, who I believe is going to be a better four-year-old. I always thought he was good as a three-year-old, but he still had the look of me uh, as a horse that could move forward, mature a little more. I think we're going to see a really good four-year-old tonalist. And Chris Clement stating that he's pointing for the Don handicap. And Richie, you think about the three-year-olds that we had. I mean, we had some good ones this year. California Chrome, uh, Bayern, and Shared Belief. What do you think they're going to be doing in the, as a four-year-olds now? Well, now we're going to see a few, at least a few of those uh, Shared Belief and California Chrome in the San Antonio, possibly Bayern, although it seems doubtful at this point. And Tonal is coming back. It's going to be fireworks. I mean, you know, get, get to see them as older horses slugging it out, and hopefully we'll get to see them do it multiple times so we have a clear-cut champion by the end of the year. It would be great to see them all meet once again in the Breeders' Cup Classic. But we will turn our attention to the three-year-old trail, the Kentucky Derby Trail, that is. The Holy Bull will take place tomorrow down at Gulfstream Park, and some very promising horses who look to be stars in the making at least here in New York, as we take a look at the gray frosted for Kieran McLaughlin. Frosted ran a terrific race here in the Remsen, just kind of against the racetrack. He's never really done anything wrong. He's got a win in three seconds from four starts. I spoke with Kieran McLaughlin. He's very, very happy with him. He thinks he's training great. He feels like he's matured a great deal. He feels like he's much more focused this year. He saw the progression he wanted to see from two to three. He's got a great post inside. He expects him to be stalking some of the speeds, he says. So he's going to have to take dirt and work out a trip, but he's very pleased with the horse. Yeah, it, he is breaking from that one hole tomorrow. Another horse, a New York bred that is from the Rick Violet Barn, is upstart as we will check him out in the Champagne, finishing second behind Carpe Diem this day. Bit of, a, of an overachiever, Rick. Yeah, and, and Rick also said he likes the progression from him. He says he hasn't gotten taller, but he's kind of filled out into himself. He was a bit leggy as a two-year-old. He's never run a bad race, and I think he's been a bit unlucky. Now, he was second best this day to Daredevil. I think he could have been closer to a little different trip. But in the Breeders' Cup, he was wide every step of the way. He kind of made a bit of a premature run to get into the race, and then he was just nose for second. When Texas Red was probably the best horse on the day, particularly the race, the way the race is run, if I could get that out. But uh, upstart, 
is a Colt that I think right now, if you put a gun to my head, would be my pick for the Derby. Yeah, and a lot of people saying that he'll probably go off as the favorite possibly tomorrow in the face of Frost. And he comes in off of a three-month layoff with a dazzling work of 112 and one for six furlongs. And Rick stating that it was scary good. It was scary good. And it wasn't in his original plan to run here. He was looking for three preps, but the horse kind of forced his hand. He said he came to hand so quickly. He's doing so well. And Rick likes to get those mile works in. He said, that work was good enough to run off of. All right. Well, Rick Violet made some noise on the Aqueduct card today as we'll get to our first replay of this Aqueduct Insider. It is a maiden special weight for the three-year-old New York bred boys. Johnny Imbrial has a call. Pine Ridge Forest going for the lead with a Lehigh five at the rail. Lehigh five and Pine Ridge Forest, and they are heads apart for the lead. Scorpion's Touch runs in third, file for divorce on the extreme outside, and boldly towards the rail. Then it's I Love Michael who's racing in the sixth, Memory, Memory Keeper in seventh. Short of parties on the outside in eighth, a break of four to Snake Oil Charlie, and Risky Sour is the trailer in tenth, the first quarter, 23 and two-fifth seconds. Pine Ridge Forest, Scorpion's Touch, File for Divorce Extreme outside. Lehigh five down at the rail. The four of them heads apart for the lead as they come for the top of the stretch. Shorter Party has moved up on the outside into fifth. The half went in 47 and four. Lehigh five has come away with the lead. File for Divorce in second. Boldly down towards the rail. Then Shorter Party and I love Michael. Lehigh five has drawn away in the stretch. And it's the favored firster, Lee High Five, who wins decisively here. Sure to party, got second. Boldly up for third, then file for divorce, and I love Michael. Rick Violet is just so dangerous with his first-time starters here. This one was highly regarded going in, took money every step of the way, uh, leading up to post, and did not disappoint, Richie. Oh, he did not disappoint. Pressure from the outside every step of the way, draws away, convincingly love his stride through the stretch. Rick Violet is just so good at preparing these young horses, and they're not just physically fit. They're mentally prepared. They're like older horses when they run. It's like they've done it already. And I know when I was riding, Maggie, I enjoyed riding his first-time starters so much because you went to the gate confident that they knew what they were doing. I think Jose Ortiz does, too. It's funny. My fiancé, Tom Morley, trains this one's half-sister, and they both run with their tongues hanging out of their mouth, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, goes with the bloodlines there. But moving on to race uh, number five or six in here, it was an allowance race for the older Phillies and mares. Once again, John and Brial with the call. And they're off. Evan Deer from the extreme outside. Bossy Saratoga away well and had it all from the rail. Had it all takes the lead. Bossy Saratoga, Evan Deer right together. Second and third. Penny Mine is running in fourth. And my Savannah Bell is next and fifth. Mike Donna Jean at the rail in sixth. Dulcify is in seventh. Then flaring in eighth and Kara's match point trails the field in ninth. The opening quarter was running 22 seconds. Had it all in front here by almost two lengths. Bossy Saratoga second by a neck. Evan Deer is on the outside in third. And then it's Penny Mine and my Donna Jean all chasing. Had it all. Who's built a four length lead at the head of the lane. Bossy Saratoga, Penny Mine on the outside. And then it's my Donna Jean coming through now down at the rail is flaring. They're closing in and now they're passing. Had it all. Here's Penny Mine. Here comes flaring inside the 16th pole. Flaring and Penny Mine. They're right together. Bossy Saratoga is third. Photo finish. It looked like Penny Mine, but a photo. Penny Mine and big long shot flaring. And Penny Mine gets the win over this speed setting, had it all, and over the big long shot. Look at that place price for flaring, 36.40. Yeah, I mean, she really ran a terrific race at a big price, but you got to love Penny Mine. And I just love when you see a trainer like Rick Schossberg have success because he had so much success with the mother. And I think it's fun to watch when they've had 
siblings or parts of the family, and they know how to train that family. Good to see Rick in the winner's circle. Yeah, and really has this filly in tip-top form as of now, just winning by a nose, but that's okay. She's won her last two, so Penny Mine in very good form for her connections as of now. We got some great races coming up on the other side of this break, and we'll take our first one here on Aqueduct Insider. Stay tuned. And as Richie, you like to call them, the Everblooms uh, surrounding the aqueduct paddock as the sun is setting there. You see JFK Airport plane taking off, but we're just taking off with this Aqueduct Insider Show. And just a reminder, new host times, weekdays, 1.20. We had our first two in the can as of now, and weekends will be 12.45 with nine races scheduled. Welcome back to Aqueduct Insider on MSG+. Plus. Maggie Wolf now along with the MIG. That's Richard Migliori. As we get back to the races on hand for this Friday card, our uh, seventh race was a allowance race for the New York bred Phillies. Johnny I with your call. And Laura Candisco. Laura Candisco down at the rail with the early lead over La Bella Valeria. Extreme outside is here's Zalicious. Miss Sylvia A is a close up fourth. Sky Saratoga's in between horses running in a fifth. Then it's the gray. Elmra in sixth. Keep busting on the outside in seventh. And Champagne Ruby trails the field in eighth. And the quarter was running 23 and one fifth seconds. Laura Candisco with a lead of three parts of a length over La Bella Valeria. La Bella Valeria now draws right alongside of Laura Candisco, and the two of them are heads apart for the lead. They've opened up three lengths on Miss Sylvia A. And here's Zalicious at the top of the stretch. Laura Candisco closest to the rail with the lead. Laura Candisco in front by almost three. La Bella Valeria, Champagne Ruby has moved up down on the inside. It's Laura Candisco with a three-length lead. Champagne Ruby into second. La Bella Valeria is back running in third. Laura Candisco trying to go wire to wire. Laura Candisco dances home by three parts of a length over Champagne Ruby. It was close for third between Keep Bustin' and Here's Zalicious. Laura Candisco maintains a near-perfect race record as she's now three for four for her trainer, Gary Gullo. What a nice little filly. She mm. leaves the gate running from post one. Jeremy Rose takes no prisoners, puts her on the lead. I thought a terrific run by the second-place finisher, uh, number six, Champagne Ruby. Taylor Rice saved ground, rallied inside, just failed to catch Laura Candisco, who has a habit of winning. <laughs> she does. You like those ones that have that kind of habit in your barn. And a guy that knows how to get him to win, it doesn't really matter if they have that habit or not, he seems to do it, is Mike Hushin. And he did send out the post-time favorite in today's eighth and final race. It was in New York Red Maiden Special Weight, the split division of that earlier fourth race. There at the start for Watch the Tie. Nonetheless, he's up close with the pace. Candid Desire. And there goes final chapter now. Final chapter takes the lead. Candid Desire runs in second and True Bet is third. Watch the tie now back running in fourth. Organic Gemini is at the rail and in fifth. Then it's Call Me Stony next in sixth, followed by Anton B in seventh. April Color runs in eighth. A break of five to a Ghost Ship and a Limerick Lightning is last. The quarter in 23 seconds. Final chapter by three quarters of a length. Candid Desire giving chase in second. Then it's True Bed and Watch the Tie, followed by Organic Gemini. And they're coming for the head of the stretch. It's final chapter down at the rail and holding on to the lead over Candid Desire. Final chapter gets clear by four lengths. Candid Desire in second. Organic Gemini making a run down on the inside. But final chapter has built a four-length lead. Organic Gemini continues to come on. They're coming down for the wire. And it's John Nehru's final chapter to win the finale. Organic Gemini was second. Close for third between Watch the Tie and True Bet. 
Richie, I had a pretty good feeling about this horse winning when I walked into the paddock and saw a tanned and healthy looking Mike Hushin back from Florida. Yeah, Mike's been spending a lot of time in Florida this winter and he did look tanned and healthy. About as healthy as his horse here. I thought this horse looked tremendous, Maggie, and, and he really beautiful stride to the lane, but really kind of a thick, full body horse. Yeah, and he really kind of took that step forward from first start to second start as he kind of got the makeover as well as he added blinkers and the addition of Lasix. And sometimes you see that backfire, but when my cushion's in your corner, you can kind of trust that in working out. One of the best horsemen around and somebody that I used to love to ride for. You could go out there with a lot of confidence every time. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I wish I could ride for him. <laughs> but uh, uh, we'll check out the rest of today's races. There's four left to get to. John and Brielle has the call of those. And Pleiade in for the love of Lil, most happy fella, and Kichi Warrior. Duke of the City now has a four-length lead. Futurazo is once again in second as Southern Proper's dropped out of it. Pleiadian is third. They are strung out as they come down for the finish. And it's the three to five favorite, Duke of the City. The winner here by five lengths. Futurazo second, Pleiadian third, most happy fellow fourth. In front as they head for home, it's Jackie Black now with a 10 length lead, maybe more. Cool Charlie is second. Real Deal Lady has moved into third. Jackie Black is going to win by the length of the stretch here. Jackie Black at least by 20 lengths. Jackie Black the winner. It's going to be pretty tight for second here. Real Deal Lady comes on now to get second over Cool Charlie with the lead. Sally's mischief is all out. Chris and Laurie's posse coming on through in between horses as Straight Bite drops back at the rail. Then it's best play and can't catch me now. Sally's mischief is the new leader. Sally's mischief by a neck. Distant Thoughts battles on, then Chris and Laurie's posse. And on the outside, here comes best play. It's going to be tight. It goes to Sally's mischief. Sally's Mischief, the winner. Photo for second is Red Gansett Bay and J.P.'s Fling. Here's Golden Story up on the outside of First Ranger. First Ranger on the inside, Golden Story on the outside, and the two of them hook up with an eighth of a mile to the finish. Golden Story. First Ranger continues to battle on, but now Golden Story is in front. Golden Story by a length. First Ranger trying to hold second. Blue Chips only coming on late. Golden Story is the winner. First Ranger did get second, then Blue Chips only, and shot to win. Well, we saw some close finishes and some blowout performances, namely back in race number two. <laughs> Richie, that was a poll. Yeah, J Jackie Black won by 35 lengths. I haven't seen... That big a margin since Secretariat won the Belmont Stakes by 31 lengths. But the field was spread out first to fourth because the fifth place in finisher was East, 67 and a half lengths. Yeah, well, I guess that speaks a lot about the rest of our competition. But moving on to one that dazzled and didn't win by that uh, much was Laura Ken. Or no, I'm sorry. Let's get to John Nehru's yeah, horse. John, we need John to Nehru. mention that. And yes. and Johnny, I did mention it. But final chapter, very aptly named horse for Mr. Nehru. Yeah, and, and Mr. Nehru will be 102 on February 9th. And he's still breeding horses. Or this is the last horse he bred. So that's why he's named final chapter. And this horse won easier than the margin of victory will indicate. He was pretty much wrapped up by Manny Franco. But Mr. Nehru has meant so much to this industry on so many levels. Not just as a horseman, but as a visionary and it's good to see him still in the winner's circle and I sure hope this isn't his final chapter. I do too. I love watching his horses run, love watching the horses that he's trained and bred and owned. Final chapter is another one of those in the winner's circle but another New York bred that dazzled today was our New York bred uh, Frost Giant standout and it was a tough call. I mean, there were some really good performances, but we decided to go for the filly who's won her last three. She did it in gate-to-wire fashion and a decent time as well. Yeah, absolutely. Under the gun from the rail, Laura Ken Disco, as Johnny I, danced her way to victory once again. And uh, you got to love her consistency, and that's the mark of the Frost Giants, consistency. And I've always said consistency is the benchmark of greatness. And make sure you contact Eric Bishop at Sunrise Stallions if you're interested in breeding to Frost Giant. Well, we'll move on to jockey standings. As of today, 
Not much has changed as Jose Ortiz still sits atop by a 10 length win margin. Well, he's looking to lead them flag fall to that's all Jose Ortiz setting a torrid pace. Manny Franco, Irad Ortiz in his wake. Nice to see Angel Cruz, an apprentice up on the leaderboard. Junior Alvarado, I'll say it again, I think he's been riding extremely well. And a tough thing, especially if you're coming off an injury. Yeah, and he's been very aggressive too, which you like to see with guys who have injuries or are coming off of layoffs, if you will. And David Jacobson has put himself three wins atop of Linda Rice's 15. Yeah, consistently running horses with it. Can win and now a three way tie on top of the owner standings, Maggie. Yeah, exactly. Rapoli's stable is uh, getting bumped around, if you will, at the top of the leaderboards. They're all tied with seven wins apiece. They were pretty active in the claim box today. Cool Charlie, Emram Ibrahim, winning a four way shake for her. Can't say that I would have been too happy. Well, and she, she was even beaten for second, although I think she was in the unenviable position of chasing Jackie Black and uh, got caught for second. The good news is she still has that mating condition. And Gary Gullo, very active in the claim box, picking up Southern Pop proper as well as Sally's mischief out of the third. Well, that'll do it for this second segment on Aqueduct Insider, and we'll head right into that, that final turn here at the Big A on the other side of these messages. Welcome back to Aqueduct Insider, checking out the view of the track from atop the grandstand, but we're checking out you guys here from our Big A studios. Welcome back to Aqueduct Insider here on MSG+. And Richie, hopefully, fingers crossed, the weather will cooperate. Maybe we won't get as much uh, precipitation as they're calling for, and they'll be racing here tomorrow. Yeah, we got to keep our fingers crossed because we got a nice card and a nice group of uh, New York breads starting out the third race. And what do you think, Maggie, you know, you know, traditionally stakes have been run later in the card, seventh race, eighth race, the feature. Nowadays, it seems like the stake can show up on any portion of the card. It seems like a lot of times the third race, how does that sit with you? Well, I think they do it for savior of the, the pick six and that they want deeper fields sure. for that sequence because sometimes these stakes do come up a bit light and this one has as far as numbers are concerned. But as far as the competition, I think it's a very, very interesting race and it is for these three-year-old New York breads in Regal Park, 125,000 on the line. You think you might get a little more action as far as entrance, but we'll check out a possible speed in winning his second to last start. That is Regal Minister. Regal Minister, who wants to be a sprinter? He, he, they tried to stretch him out. They're going back to his strength. He's fast. He wants to be fast. And um, a horse that kind of runs mean. He has his ears pinned. He kind of gets <laughs> at it. And right inside of him, the horse that runs uh, second here, breaking the fever. Now, my question to you, Maggie, is you've got Regal Minister who stretched out to a mile and 70. Breaking the fever, stayed in the barn, he ran six, now he's back at six. Do you think there's a possibility that might have dulled Real Minister's speed just a little bit and breaking the fever might outfoot him? Well, I'm actually in the barn with the breeds. They, they're in our barn, and this horse is jumping out of his skin. I mean, that they're holding their breath for him to get to the races, make it into the gate. It's so unfortunate, though, that they draw the same exact way as they did for the notebook. Yeah, he was at a disadvantage in the notebook being kind of pinned inside, but he's in the same position again. I'll be curious to see if Oscar Gomez maybe doesn't just try to go to the lead. Yeah, exactly, because he got shut off at, at several points of the race last time out, so it'll be an interesting matchup with these two but we have some new shooters including a first time out maiden breaking uh, horse and deficit hawk once again we're looking at a Rick Violet Furster he got a pretty big fig for this effort he did and once again very professional in his debut Rick Violet just so good with those first time starters but he, I think he's gonna have to push the throttle forward a little bit to be competitive with these but there is that opportunity don't you think well yes and, and people are critical of this because he did get a perfect setup I mean there was three speed horses going at it he just sat the pocket and was able to finish had a lot left in the tank uh, but he kind of looks to almost get that same kind of setup here again because the speed's drawn towards the inside of yep. him and he can sit stalking and he's already shown the ability to take the kick back and be game a lot of first time starters will back off he didn't well exactly a lot i'm sure a lot of us are uh dreaming or thinking about this horse's name <laughs> saratoga dreaming he was doing just that when he debuted going five and a half 
on the turf this past August. Well, he, he won sprinting on the turf. Then he stretched out on a yielding course up in uh, at Woodbine. I, you probably have a better hand on this. Do you think he has the physical makeup to translate that form to dirt? I don't know. I do like, though, Richie, that he is turning back in distance. I think that's key. But it's also a big vote of confidence that Crystal Clement decides to chip this horse up from Pace and Park, only horse here, uh, and give him a shot against these New York breads. So I think it's a very interesting race with several ways you can go. But another race that is pretty good on the card is race number eight and it is an allowance race for four-year-olds and up we're going a rare distance of a mile and three sixteenths we're checking out wealth to me who's in good form right now for david jacobs yeah wealth to me my question about him is it seems to me like he does some of his best work on these one turn elongated races i mean his race at saratoga was good albeit for cheaper and he had a tough trip but i like him a little bit more at belmont park and he's coming in off of a decent effort in the stake down at laurel and he'll be doing a rain dance hoping it's wet Classic Sense was complimented, complimented, excuse me, uh, by Celebrated Talents blowout win a couple days ago here. But he'll be looking for back-to-back -back wins for Chad Brown. Yeah, and he's one for one over the inner track. I like horses that have had success on the inner track, and I think he's going to get a nice trip. I think he's fast enough to get position, but he's not committed to a position. Another horse that has a decent record on the Aqueduct inner is Percussion for Todd Pletcher, but. Let's face it, Richie, he has not been in good form as of now, though he has faced better, as we'll check out his second in the Stymie last year. Yeah, this was last year, and he fought every step of the way, tooth and nail in the Stymie, and I really haven't seen that horse since then, so I'm just wondering if maybe he's not the same horse he was last year. You gotta wonder if his best days are behind him, though the class relief, you would think, would help him here, and his affinity for the inner track. Well, a guy that might have some other ideas going forward for tomorrow's card is our own Andy Serling. Here's your hand handicapping insider for tomorrow. Thanks a lot, guys. Well, how about the sixth race on Saturday? How about a trainer change to Leo Giamatti for the 9C Raven? And if we're racing tomorrow, the track figures to be wet, and that can only help C Raven. The source has shown some talent, and I think the trainer switch to Leo Giamatti could be enough to put him over the top here. I'm going all the way in the sixth race with C Raven on Saturday. Andy, for once, I like the way you're thinking with my girl Leah. There was her previous boss. That's Mike Hushin in the winner's circle. We were glad to see Mike, but we're even more happy to see you guys here checking out Aqueduct Insider. Hope you tune in tomorrow and have a good night.